Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be covering how to draw a study of the arm using charcoal. I'm going to be using a combination of a 4B charcoal pencil, vine charcoal, as well as a kneaded eraser. Uh, so we'll cover how to do the whole drawing process from start to finish. Hopefully you find it helpful. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is use our vine charcoal. And this is a soft vine charcoal to begin the drawing. And what I like to do is just map out a few basic points. You want to find the point that's furthest to the top for the arm, probably somewhere about here. And then uh, find the one that's furthest to the bottom, right about here. And then you can also do the elbow be right about here, uh, kind of in between, so approximately in between the top and bottom points, you're going to have the elbow. And uh, what this does is help you to frame your composition, make sure that you draw the arm the correct size, fill up most of the page, uh, so that way you don't get this minuscule uh, little drawing on your paper. So then using these points, we can then do some basic line work. You can keep it pretty loose at this stage. You don't want to get too caught up in details or um, overt attention to accuracy. You just want to get a basic feel for the composition and the sizing of your piece. Pressing very lightly with my vine charcoal, I'm going to begin to map out the basic contour that we're seeing. Remember that with composition you don't want to get too close to the edge of the page, so I'm keeping an eye here, uh, making sure that the hand ends a little bit above that edge of the page. And you can see that what I'm doing is simplifying all of the curvature into a series of planes. So for example, on this curve, you have that division of one plane here, followed up by another plane change here, and that gives you a more simplified version of what's going on in that curve. So this gives me the basic structure of the arm, and of course this will be adjusted as I go on, uh, corresponding to the musculature and uh, some of, more of the details and nuances that we're seeing on the interior of the arm. So this contour is just a basic idea, um, but it will be adjusted based on what's happening on the actual form of the arm. We'll include a little bit of the back. And what I'm eyeballing is how far up is the back from the elbow. Elbow is about here. The back begins just slightly above it, right about here. And then we have another plane change, right about where the shoulder hits, right here. Include some of the chest as well. But again, we will focus primarily on the arm, so some of this outer area will be less important as what we're doing with the arm. And again, press lightly when you're doing this so you don't want to go too hard with the vine trickle. Just make sure it's easy to erase. You can wipe it off. And that way you can correct any mistakes if needed. So that gives us a nice contour. That step one is just figuring out the line work. All the big shapes, no detail. The second step is going to be mapping out the shadow shapes. Uh, so here we have the light coming from the upper right. So that means our shadows are going to be on the left. And what I'm doing is just drawing the contour of the shadows. And what this will do is allow us to have more of an understanding of the 
not only the light pattern, but also the form and musculature that's going on, the anatomical structure of the arm itself. So you can see how it comes in here. I'm using my knowledge that there's the deltoid covering this upper part of the arm, which creates this inner curve for the shadow, transitions into the tricep, which comes down into the elbow. Now what happens with the elbow is we have the bone structure happening here. So we have a breakup in the shadow where we have this smaller section here, and that's followed up by another longer shadow that happens on the forearm, cutting through this way, all the way down to the hand. And then that continues down through here, into the fingers. And you don't have to get caught up yet on like the details of the fingers at this point, just keep it very simple. And we'll do a continuation of this shadow on the back. So that's going to curve around here and cover pretty much all of this area on the left side of the back. You can just go ahead and fill it in with your vine charcoal using the side. So you use it just like you would with a brush using a large edge. And I can just fill up most of this shadow shape that I've mapped out all the way down through here. You could even go pretty dark with this. Um, vine charcoal tends to be lighter than a charcoal pencil. Uh, so when I keep working into this, you'll notice that it, even though I go pretty dark with it at first, it's actually lighter than some of the stuff that I'm going to put over it. So the shadow shape continues through here, curves in, and I'm kind of looking at where is this curve in relation to the elbow, and it's pretty much level with it. That continues down through here, and curves to the left, <clears throat> towards the bottom. And you, just like we did with the arm, we can just fill up this shadow area. So covering up this space that we mapped out. That gives us a good amount of information for the arm, as well as a little bit on the ribs. Got some smaller shadows that happen here on the joint. And so there we can see a little more structure going on with the arm. And uh, we have our shadows mapped out. So what we want to do next is figure out a tone for our lights. So um, I always step back from my piece, want to look at it from a distance that allows us to make sure our proportions are looking correct. Uh, seeing it as a whole piece, it's very easy to get caught up in smaller areas when you're right up against your piece. So you always want to step back from your image, look at it from a distance, and make sure everything is coming together accurately. Looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do next is establish a tone for the lights, and you can see how dark I'm going and keeping it really general, just covering the entire lighter section of the figure with one basic tone that I can build upon. There we go. Might as well do a little bit of a cast shadow from the figure going this way just to fill up some of this negative space. All right. So now we have 
atone for our lights, atone for our darks. And uh, you want to keep in mind that the tone for the light side, what you're getting at is more of a mid-tone. Uh, so don't go too light with it. You want to make sure that it has a pretty sub substantial value. Next, what you'll do is go ahead and blend it. So what you do is soften up both areas so that you have a smoother quality to the charcoal. And I'm using a blending stump, but you could also use a chamois or a paper towel even is fine. And what that will do is just allow you to get this smoother texture over the charcoal that you've already put down. It's going to flatten out some of that texture that uh, the paper creates. And you can see the difference there. So sometimes, you know, you do the majority of the drawing using a blending stump, where after you've got your tones established, you go at it with the blending stump and create these subtle nuances of values where they transition from one to the next and create all kinds of really nice details. It helps to enhance the form, uh, the sense of luminosity as well. So without the blending, the image can tend to look very flat, but it, the more you get at it with the blending stem, the softer it will look and the more subtlety you'll be able to create in your piece. And you can always build on top of it, like even if you want more of a textural piece, what you can do is blend it and then put another layer of charcoal on top, which will preserve some of the texture that you have from the paper. And uh, that will be built on top of this original layer that I'm softening, and it will give you the subtlety along with some of that texture, if that's what you would like in your drawing. So smoothening out both areas, and you can see how that's allowed me to get more subtle value changes throughout the figure. And I can continue to refine this as I go along. The more you go at it with the blending stump, the softer it will get and the, the more tight it's going to look. So once I have a pretty good two values established with the lights and shadows, I can start using the charcoal pencil to get more of the subtleties in the values, some of those darks, and uh, some more detail and clarification to my edges. I'll begin on the side of the arm, right about here, and what I want to do now is pay a little bit more attention to the line work. So some of the more accurate curvature that I'm seeing on the edge of the arm. So being more careful with my line work. Just using the tip of my pencil. Do the same thing on the other side. I can see that this side begins a little higher than the left. So I want to pay attention to that, just eyeballing it right about here. It's going to continue down and uh, when you're doing your lines like this what you want to keep in mind is you don't want to have it be the same the whole way through so a lot of the time what happens is you'll get a darker part of the line here and have it fade off where it gets lighter and then reappear towards the bottom so you have this uh, more interesting dynamic where the line gets uh, darker in one section and then lighter in another and then darker again. 
So it's this push-pull effect that gives you more interest in your drawing. So more shadow here, I got more of a clarified edge. And then paying attention to more of these subtle angle changes and curves that I'm seeing happening on the arm. So about here is my elbow. I make sure that this is clearly established. More focused edges. A lot of the time with vine charcoal, the edges will be a little hazy, like you see here. So what I'm doing with the charcoal pencil is bringing those edges into focus, making them sharper. You can see the difference there with the sides of the arms. It's more clarified. Uh, you've got more definition. Doing some hatch marks now to enhance some of the darker tones that I'm seeing. Very closely together spaced, like uh, you want your hatch marks to have a subtle quality to them. You also want to think about the form, so like how this is somewhat of a cylindrical form. So the hatch marks should be more or less following that. The direction of the cylinder. So I'm going this way. And um, what I'm establishing here is a core shadow that travels down the upper arm, beginning on the deltoid. It gets a little bit wider towards the tricep around here. So making my hatch marks a little bit wider to correspond with that. You have a break in the musculature that happens about here. This is where the tricep comes in. And so the core shadow is going to move to the left and go this way. So further to the left, like this. And then that goes down to the elbow. Right about here. So you can see the core shadow getting established there. And I will blend this uh, as I go with my blending stump. So uh, this will get a little bit more subtlety. I'm not just going to leave it as you see here. Just want to get a more accurate value down. So right here we get more of these smaller changes on the elbow. Um, you have this upper curve on the shadow that goes this way. Wrapping around the edge of this bone, it's going to come down towards the right over here, going about this close to the right side of the arm somewhere here, just like that. You got some light hitting here, which we've already kind of mapped out with the vine charcoal, and this core shadow travels down this way, and it's a narrow space, curves around that elbow, and down into the forearm. And you want to follow that original contour for the, out, the inner section of the shadow, right about here. So just traveling down, still paying attention to the direction of the form, that cylindrical form. So it has a slight diagonal going down to the right. And it's going to continue all the way to the wrist this way. And to the hand. Just getting a bit more 
have an idea of how those fingers are going the direction. But uh, still, not really any detail. It's just getting a bit more clarification with the outer contour of the fingers. All right, so we've got our core shadow traveling down the arm now. And like I mentioned, uh, we want to blend it. Let me just add in a little bit more towards the shoulder. We don't want to forget this upper section of the arm. So getting a bit more darker value here, creating somewhat of a triangular shape throughout the musculature here. into the neck. So you can see how this core shadow continues into the neck region and up into there. So what I'll do is take my blending stump and then soften up what I've put in. I want to make sure that it has a natural transition into the mid-tone that we established earlier. So you can see how it's much softer, more of a gradation. And I'm going downwards with this, so going a slightly different direction than my strokes, just so that it blends more evenly. I'm not pressing hard. I just go at it very progressively until I have it where I want it. So it's not so much about pressing hard, it's just lightly going over a section until it softens up into the amount that you would want it at. I keep looking back and forth from the figure to my drawing every few seconds to make sure that I'm getting the correct um, proportions and accuracy still down even at this stage. Constantly checking and, and correcting anything if needed. So I, like here I'm paying attention to how you've got this curve going on in the shadow area. So coming upwards to the left and then going back down, pressing lightly, keeping the gradation smooth. You can see the difference. Now, here I have the reflective light, so I want to preserve the lighter area of the shadow that we're seeing on the left. So even as I blend, just want to keep that in mind, make sure I don't go too dark on this left section of the arm. Somewhat like that. As I get to the elbow, it's going to get a little bit smaller areas, so you could use um, more of the tip of your blending stump. If you're using a tissue, you could use more of your forefinger to get into the smaller areas. And just work on softening up those form shadows. Remember, form shadows are always going to have softer edges as they travel around the surface of the muscles. So softening as it goes into the light, as opposed to cast shadows, which are going to be a bit of a sharper edge. And keep looking back and forth from the figure to your drawing. That's going to allow your brain to translate what you're seeing onto the paper more effectively. Making sure that you're getting as much information as possible as you continue your drawing. I'm using my whole arm when I'm shading, so not just my wrist, but really the whole length of my arm from my elbow, or rather my shoulder, uh, all the way down to my wrist. Just 
just allows me to get more freedom with the movement, get more accuracy and subtlety with the shading. And again, keep stepping back from it, look at it from a distance every now and then, just so that you're seeing the whole piece as a unified uh, work rather than a specific section. And so now you can see how this has created a lot more subtlety. You've got more nuanced value transitions within the intersection of the arm. And you can continue using the blending stump, even some of the residue that it's picked up along the way, and create some of these darker transitions um, in some sections that you see needs it. So like if there's a very subtle darker area, sometimes what you can do is just use your blending stump, some of the residue, and keep going at it until it darkens it and softens it until you have it where you need it. So there, you can see more of the structure of the arm. I think I want to blend it a bit more towards the forearm. So down here, as I back away from it, that's where I can see that I want it to be a bit more subtle here. More of a progressive gradation from dark to light. So continuing to drag some of this darker value into the right side and blending it, keeping it soft. And what that will do is get me more of a, a subtle gradation and maintain that core shadow. So that looks pretty good. At this point, what I can do is then uh, revisit certain areas even more with another layer using the charcoal pencil. So maybe find some even deeper darks. For example, I have one here on the shoulder, or I mean the elbow. This crevice where the muscle meets the bone, you're going to have this indent where you get a deeper section of the shadow right about here, transitioning into the rest of the shadow. So just adding some more of that subtlety using the charcoal pencil. Sometimes you can just keep it as is without even blending it. And do a little more here as well, a little darker area. But again, I'm not pressing lightly with this either and just slowly working it into the darkness that I wanted it. So defining that structure little by little, getting more of these darks. And I'm still using hatch marks. When I get this core shadow just a tad bit darker, so carefully lightly going in with the charcoal pencil all the way down and just adding one more layer to get it a bit more of a deeper value. So it's a building process from one layer to the next. Each layer will inform whatever is on top of it. And see that how it enhances the curvature and then I go back at it with the blending stump in this area and soften it again with a light touch. And you can see how that gives more of a volume to that forearm. I'm going to blend the hand a little more. Let's get out a bit more definition 
and we can also work a little bit on the upper section of the arm going back at it with the charcoal pencil it can go just a little darker in the core shadow of the deltoid a little deeper so adding a few more hatch marks around here pay attention to the curvature of the muscle so how the deltoid creates this triangular shape so it's going to come in And then veer towards the left slightly here. And keep blending as you go. So after you've put in more charcoal, go back at it with the blending stump. And soften it. You can see how that gives it even more subtlety. There's a bit more nuance here, where you have uh, more of a separation of the musculature. I'm doing a bit more layering towards this right section of the forearm, going just a little darker through here. Having it come in, and then I'm going to blend that. It gives it a bit more of a separation between those muscles you're seeing on the forearm. Now on the wrist you have this bone structure, smaller bone structure here, which will create a smaller darker area right about there. So I just add that in with the charcoal pencil, maybe blend it a little bit, but not much. Towards the top we have um, the bone structure of the shoulder. So where the bone meets the muscle, getting that just a bit darker as well, all through here, slanting slightly upwards, following that um, trapezius muscle through here. And then uh, going ahead and blending that as well to make sure it's softened, just like the rest of the form. There we go. I'll blend this a bit more on the shoulder, or I mean the elbow, keep confusing the two. <laughs> so when I step back from it, I can see this still looks a little too stark, so I just want to soften it a little bit. There, so that looks a little better. And so what will help now is to go a little darker with the shadow on the side here. Uh, so I'm going to apply some layering with the charcoal pencil. Paying attention to some of those darker accents that I'm seeing within this shadow shape. Still using hatch marks and following the direction of the form. So going more this way as it curves like this. And I will blend this just like I did with the arm after putting it in. There is a coarse shadow that happens here. All the way through to 
the bottom. And we can go ahead and blend this. Allowing us to get more subtlety. And really paying attention to the softness between this area and the mid-tone that's on the right of it. So that original tone that we put in with the vine charcoal. Just keep going at it until it's nice and soft. Very gradual transition from dark to light. Something like that. Could even go a bit more through here. More blending. There we go. See that? How it gets more and more subtle the more you go at it with the blending stump. And then there's some of those darker nuances here. Um, we've got the musculature. So that's what I was saying, where you can go at it with the blending stump and create these very subtle, darker gradations like you're seeing here. I see a few of them here. Continue to soften here, allowing it to come together more evenly. And towards the bottom, in the waist, I want to get this a little softer. Stepping back from it, looking at it from a distance, see it's looking better. I can go in with the vine charcoal once more and go just a little darker through here, adding another layer. Uh, I can see that this has to be, in general, it's a tad bit darker as well as through here. Um, we have the division from the spinal cord, which creates this darker area um, on the other side of the back which is going to kind of follow this contour that we've made and create this additional darker shadow area so paying a, a bit more attention to the accuracy at this stage and then I can blend it. Blend here as well. Bring more subtlety. Okay. You can see how that's uh, allowing this bottom section to have a bit more volume. So seeing it as a whole, where if the light is coming from up here, naturally that means that as you go to the lower section of the figure, you're going to have uh, some darker values. So as a whole, this is going to be a darker area than what we're seeing up here. Moving on to this section, we can add some more definition to the breast. So um, I'll begin with the armpit area. We have this additional crevice here. 
kind of break in the space, which I can add in with the charcoal pencil. Try to not see it so much as a line where it, it does have a form shadow happening, particularly towards the upper section, and so I can blend that just a little bit. So it's not too much of just this stark line. Something like that. And then going to the breast, we can, uh, I'll use some of my vine charcoal to figure out the contour a little more accurately. We can see that there's an angle change here. So bringing it out just a bit further and then following through with this bottom curve, which will get a little darker because it's facing away from the light. So it goes to about here, curves up, pressing really lightly. And then we get this shadow area through here. Okay. For the nipple, you can just treat it the same way as a shadow, just as a darker area. And we will then blend it as we usually do. And make sure that it's tied in with the rest of the figure. So going back to the blending stem, starting here, I will blend it. Make sure it's nice and soft and has a natural transition into the lighter section. And we'll do the same here. Just making sure it's all tied together. here, more blending. So that's looking better. I want to pay attention to the contour. So um, continuing here, I want to sharpen this just a little bit and give more attention to detail with the curves that are going on. So getting more specific with the outline. But um, really paying attention to the musculature. We have the division of the legs here. So I can go just a bit darker. And blend just slightly. Sometimes it's nice to have some of that line work showing a little bit. But at the same time, it's like a balance where I don't want it to be too um, distracting from the rest of the figure. So I, I do want to kind of blend it in with the tone that's on the intersection. So that's not too much of an abrupt line showing up. And just gradually blend it in like that. blend here as well in between the legs. A general idea in a lot of these types of drawings is as you get further away from the focal point, which is the arm, you could get more diffused. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. Go a little bit sharper with this edge, but uh, don't want to invest too much detail into it. I'll continue the shading just a bit more towards the right over here. And blend it. Okay. 
one at a time you want to darken the bottom section of the figure wherever it's hitting the floor and that helps to ground it. Something like this. And let's kind of blend that. I'm going to go in with the charcoal pencil, add a bit more nuance here to the details on the nipple, more clarification of the structure. You don't need much, just a few marks is really enough, you know, to get where you need to be there. Also paying attention to the edges on the upper section of the body. Go in with the vine charcoal once more, a little darker, and blend. Just getting a bit more value change. There's another kind of section here that goes a little darker. And the neck begins just about here. blend that. Let's go ahead and do a bit more to the back. So I just want to tie this together here, blend it, give it more of a soft consistency, and go in with the charcoal pencil. It's going to go darker towards the left section right about here and then the inner structure has that division in the middle where the spinal cord is so we want to go just a bit darker here and create some more of these um value transitions that we're seeing on the back so identifying more of the darks that are going on, and then we will blend it. So have that defined, and then I'm going to go in with the blending stump and soften it up. like that. So that helps to just tie it in with the arm a bit more and clarify this edge slightly with the charcoal pencil to give it a bit of a sharper edge. Maybe a little darker here. Okay, I'm gonna go a bit darker down here to correspond with what we just put in at the top. Just in a few areas. And maybe a bit more blending. Alright. So what we have um, pretty much left is maybe getting a bit more detail in the hand, and we want, don't want to go overboard with it. So a um, common mistake is to do too much on the hands. We just want to identify some of the important areas that we need to put in. So I'm using the charcoal pencil and seeing some of these figures as cylindrical shapes as well. Um, paying a bit more attention to the actual structure. So I have the palm, which goes to about here. We have the knuckle starting here. 
probably going to have to extend the fingers out a little more, so pulling this forward maybe to about here. And I'm using the vine charcoal. The middle two fingers are going to be extended to about here. And the pinky will be further in and extended to here. So that's some of those more minor adjustments that we can make, which are doable even at this later stage of the drawing. Once I do that, I can blend in some of the tone that I've put in and just make sure that it ties in with the value that's already there. Take some of the kneaded eraser and lift off what's not necessary at this point, clarify some of the line work. Just like that. So I can see the structure more clearly. And then I will go back in with the charcoal pencil and get some more of the subtle value changes. For example, the shadow that's on the lower section of the fingers. and just um, make it a, a little stronger. You don't have to draw like individual nails or anything like that. Just really see it as best you can as an abstract shape and simplify it. Really just see it as values. And then blend. And again, since the focal point is the arm, you don't have to invest as much time into the hand. Because really we want the attention to be on the structure of the arm for this drawing. You could do a whole other session of um, uh, the other way around where you do the hand as the focal point. And then the, the structures around it be more faded. But in this case, we're paying more attention to the arm structure. So we have it at a pretty good point right now. Uh, I think best thing to do next is to take the kneaded eraser and lift off any highlights that we see uh, on the figure. So any areas that we need to brighten, we can go ahead and do that. You want to begin at the top, so the light's strongest up here, like we mentioned earlier. So naturally we'll get a highlight on this upper right section of the shoulder, just lightly tapping it with my kneaded eraser and pulling off a little bit of the charcoal that's on there. Um, that will continue a bit towards the right section of the forearm. Pay attention to the muscle. It's going to be more subtle here, though, so you don't want to go too strong. You don't want to lift off too much. So around here, traveling down, I keep on kneading the eraser, hence the name. And... Uh, We'll continue down here on the bicep area. Soften it a little by just lightly dragging the eraser over the surface. Continuing here to the right of the elbow. And it gets darker down here. You don't get much of a highlight on the forearm, but uh, where the bone juts out a bit here on the wrist, you may get just a small indication of light hitting that area. Maybe a few hints here on the fingers, knuckles as well. On the chest area, 
and a little highlight here on the breast. Uh, we can see one on the top left, right around here. Make sure that it just gradually blends into the rest of the mid-tone that's around it. And then that continues a little bit towards the rib cage, but not much. It's going to get darker, so just very barely lifting off some of that charcoal. And that will be less and less as you go down. So something like that. And you can see how that pulls the form forward even a bit more, gives it some more highlight and structure. always go on lightly uh, with any tool that you're using you don't want to go too strong with it you know work up into either the dark or light that you're trying to establish rather than trying to nail it right away so at this point I'm just refining uh, any small areas, details, and you could do that either with the charcoal pencil or a sharpened vine charcoal. Like here I'm adding more nuanced edge. Maybe sharpen some sections up here and there. But um, this should pretty much show you some of the key things to look for when rendering the figure uh, focusing on the arm structure. Um, so as a quick review, we began, as we usually do with our charcoal drawings, with the basic line work, uh, focusing on the big shapes, proportion. Uh, you kind of want to make sure that the, both the upper arm and forearm are about equal in size from one joint to the next. And uh, after you've gotten your big shapes in, your line work, contour, uh, you divide it into light side, shadow side. So identify the contour of that shadow, uh, draw it out, just a general shape, train your eye to see that structure, the flow of the light. Once you have that in, you can fill it in. Uh, again, pretty dark with the vine charcoal is you can build on top of it, as you've seen, with an additional layer of charcoal to go even darker. And uh, you want to put in a tone for your shadow, put in a tone for your lights, and then blend those two areas so that they meld into each other uh, very evenly. Once you have that in, you can then go with the charcoal pencil and establish the nuances. So the core shadow, some of these darker patches that you see on the, the smaller sections, like the elbow, uh, some of the core shadow that you see here, and you do that with the hatch marks, as we mentioned. And then from there, you blend it as you keep adding more and more. Make sure to blend it so that it ties in with what's behind it. Keep building those layers, and you do that throughout the entire piece. That's kind of the the whole middle section of the piece is uh, focusing on those nuances and uh, going in with the blending stump and making sure that you have really nice gradations from one area to the next. And then, of course, you conclude with the just refining the small details, uh, focus on the edge control, making sure you have a variety of edges. Remember that you don't want your line to be the same the whole way through. Maybe darker in one area, have it fade off, reappear in another section, and that will provide more interest in your drawing as a whole. So hopefully that helps you with your figure drawing process. Of course, you could build it even more than what I've done here, but uh, I think that this shows you some of the main things that you want to keep in mind when drawing out the figure, focusing on the arm. All right, so that does it for today. 
and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you have any questions about uh, anything related to art, whether it be this drawing or anything else, let me know in the comments and I can get back to you. Take care. Hope you have a awesome rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.